worry about whether they're going to get smothered or they're going to their time at the park is going to is going to get ruined. Um, the next picture shows a shot of the cemetery from as far back as you can stand in on the green section, and then up close on the as you can see on the back corner, the the head white is just fully visible from this area, and it's just well it's it's a prime location. Um, your next picture was the picnic shelter, which is a suggested area by the Fort Williams committee. And as you can see, you can't see the coast, you can't see the water, and you can't at all see um, Portland Head White. And I just, um, as much as I appreciate their time and effort that they put into and in allowing me to come and speak, um, I think the town would be losing um, on a good business opportunity. By, by moving forward and having that be the recommended area um, for anybody else. If I, you know, if, if you turn down the proposal that I have tonight that people would be coming to, to pay for that, for that section. Um, the next picture, the next few pictures are shot directly in front of the head white and the head white is not at all complete, at all visible. Um, your third picture on page three has a small little arrow there they'll show you where the head white is and it's just barely visible and that's taken um, just this week with no foliage and then the next slot next picture would um, would actually show the pic you see the picnic shelter in the background and for all intents and purposes of my of my wedding it's that's just not um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I wouldn't be willing as somebody coming into the town to pay <coughs> pay a premium to, to get married there. Not that it's not an, a nice area, but that's just... Um, as, as you can see on the next few slides, that's another... Um, if you get up close to the picnic shelter, you, you can see the fort, but again, that is without any... I mean, you can see the, the headlight, but again, that is without any foliage brought in, which will be coming around in, in the month of June, July, and definitely August and September. The next two at the bottom um, already already show that you have porta potties on site. If the town wishes that there needs to be more more facilities for accommodating that that accommodating that amount of crowd, then bringing bringing them in is not in, bring more facilities in is not is not that big of a deal or, or that big of a problem. It's a phone call away. Um, I'm in the slide just before that shows um, in the color of yellow the roads lined out on the back side of the back side of the fort now as many years as I've been involved with the fire department that is a very wide road area that if God forbid everything anything was to happen um, with the headlight we still have at if you parked cars in one in a single file along that road you'd still have access for the fire trucks to get in and weigh our five inch diameter hose down to bring water to the lighthouse. So parking, if an issue, um, cars can just pull in there and park and they'll be out of the way. People won't have to look at them. Visitors to the park won't, won't have to search around for a, for a parking spot if t-ball or baseball is going on that day. All, all the wedding reception cars will be out of sight, out of mind. Do you have a question for uh, Dr. and Sarah? Yeah. Yes. Is the space you're thinking of, like if I'm driving my car right toward the Portland headlight on the right? Directly, low line directly on, the, yep, where all the... the uh, so it's not, not up high right. where people fly kites. It's, it's no. over to the right. Yep, to the, so to the could, right of the roundabout. Okay, so you which could park cars in that, dirt, drive, in that dirt parking lot. <coughs> the by the way, the people park for the soccer. Yes. Yeah. If wanted to, but I was suggesting those back roads where the cars would be out of the way, um, because the Fort the Fort Williams committee that one of their concerns was um, at a at a, a wedding population of a hundred plus, you'd be running into a, a parking issue, and people visiting the fort would be then searching for. It'd be kind of like pulling into Kettle Cove and trying to find a parking spot when everybody realizes you can park there and walk down Crescent Beach, and not pay to get into the beach to the state park. Tucker, did you have a chance to finish your uh, presentation? Were you all set? Um, I, I've kind of run out of slides, so. Okay, all right. I'd be, I'd be willing to entertain any questions okay. or. 
All right, uh, and we also have tonight uh, Bill Nickerson from the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, so I, I think we'd like to hear from him. But before Tucker sits down, does anybody have any questions for Tucker? Probably just one item just to clarify, and I have yeah. a question. Uh, your proposal is that there will not be alcohol here at the wedding. Right? That, so that, that is correct. That's, I, my family doesn't, doesn't drink. I have no interest in I've seen my cousins when they do, and I'd like to, I'd like to enjoy my wedding. So we um, we have no we have no intention of even even if it's held off offsite at Billy Bamford Strawberry Fields. Um, have no interest in having alcohol anyway. Uh, Jessica, I have a couple of questions. Yes, ma'am. Um, on Friday at the rehearsal dinner, what did you anticipate the numbers being then? At the rehearsal dinner, mm -hmm. I have no idea, ma'am. That's Okay, and with a, in your uh, your uh, proposal, you mentioned 300 guests. How many automobiles are you thinking that will be um, coming in? Oh. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, we, first of all, it's not being picked up on the record, but Jordan, uh, excuse me, Tucker. Yes. Would you agree that that would be about the number? I would. I would agree that that would be about. Can, the can you can you restate that number? So I, I will re I will restate that I sent out 300 invitations and I've been getting declines back left and right. So I, <laughs> I'm not familiar with what the approximate guest is. That's why I have 250 at this time. Um, 300 was the original proposal because that's what I mailed out. Um, so would you say that might be around 100 to 150 cars? I would be willing to say 100 or 150. Okay, which might include the, <coughs> the caterers and others who are working at the wedding. I would include that in, in that as well. And I'll go buy a lottery ticket if there's more because I was way wrong and I can't be wrong. Okay. All right, Jessica? Um, and on Sunday morning, what was the time frame for dismantling all of the, the tents and all of the other equipment? Well, that's, that's, the, that's the question at hand is if, if the town council and the town wants to move forward in pursuing the, uh, the attempt of, of generating revenue, what timeline would the town like to, like to see it as set forth? If you would like it out there as soon as possible, um, I would refer back to um, Mr. Tibbetts to tell you how soon he can, he can get down there or on special occasions of having the tents at Fort Williams. You see, what I'm, you see where I'm going with that? I can't speak for, for what you folks would have in mind or what he's capable of doing. I thought I heard Mr. Tibbetts say around 9 in the morning <coughs> on Sunday, um, yeah. and I suppose if he wanted to pursue this and there was a desire to have something earlier, we could have that conversation. Well, I, I don't see why it wouldn't hurt to have a conversation. Okay. Any other questions? Jessica. Well, I, I was wondering if you were, was there a fee involved that you were proposing to pay the town for this? Well, um, I would propose that I've, I have budgeted in and already spent a couple thousand dollars on a videographer and, a, and two photographers. If the town would like access to any of that footage for any promotion, that they see fit, I would be more than willing to, to turn that over. What you folks deem as um, you would like to see to generate revenue, I think, would be up to you. So your offer, just to make sure I understand, would be that if the town were interested in doing this, you would make available photographs or videos for us to use for promoting any, this as a venue? Any, anything that you, well, I, just only that, that would be my impression of being a guinea pig, would be that you would want. And since there's no alcohol, we won't have any uh, um, unruly behavior that we would have to worry about in these videos. That would, that would also be uh, <laughs> fairly guaranteed, I would hope. Jim. Uh, because the uh, Fort Williams Advisory Council um, works with the town council, uh, and they've already looked at this request, <coughs> I, I really would love to help Bill Nickerson, the chair, come and speak to us about the, about the the workshop that they conducted where they had some, some points of view that were concerns, but nothing. I think the important point for all of us to understand is that this is on our radar screen, and we are doing the due diligence and the background work outside of this request to come forward at some point with a wedding uh, procedure or policy, not unlike the 13 
uh, requests that we have on the table for food vending at Fort Williams. But all of the pre-work that was done prior to going out to bid is the good work that the, that the, uh, the Fort Williams Advisory Council is doing. So I'd like to hear from Bill if we could, because I think that might engage in more conversation, because they have uh, asked Tucker questions in, a, in the workshop. And some of those questions have been answered here a little bit, but there are still questions that, that I think need to get resolved. Um, and I, 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 you know, it's, you're the chair, you decide, but I think Bill ought to be asked to speak at some point soon, <coughs> rather than more questions from the uh, Yeah, that's fine with me. Uh, Tucker, if you wouldn't mind just taking a seat, and uh, if we could hear from Bill Nickerson, and I'm sure we're gonna have more questions for you that's as well, so please don't go. No problem. All right. Uh, uh, thank you for coming tonight, Bill. I'm Bill Nickerson. Good evening, everybody. Um, we, we, Tucker made his presentation at, at a, one of our normal monthly meetings, and then in the interim, we had a workshop and discussed it in uh, pretty significant detail. And our determination was that timing is unfortunate um, in the first instance because we're working, as you know, on a on a uh, master plan, revising the master plan, and um, looking at ways of generating revenue will be part of our master planning process. Something that clearly we've talked about is the idea of having wedding receptions, um, but we feel that there needs to be a plan in place, maybe a venue in place, um, as opposed to having weddings all over the fort. Uh, what we'd like, I think I speak for the committee in saying that what we'd like to do is take a look in, through the master planning process at all of the different buildings, venues, et cetera, within the fort and try to come up with that area where we think wedding receptions can be held. They, are, they, they do generate noise, they do de generate commotion, um, and try to find a place where they can be held without being intrusive upon the experience of those who are visiting the lighthouse. And um, we felt that Number one, tents have only been allowed uh, down on that green for three separate types of events, the Beach to Beacon, the uh, Coast Guard change of command ceremony, and the Governor's Conference back in the early 80s. So to open it up beyond those three very restrictive um, kinds of events then opens up, you know, who knows what. And, um, and conversely, the uh, tents have only been allowed up near the picnic shelter. Um, adjacent in that area, elevated area above the picnic, by the picnic shelter, which also provides parking. Um, you know, there's the road that can go up and around so cars can be parked up there as well. So we felt that it was premature to allow uh, tents to be put up on the green because once it's been done for one, it becomes more difficult to if there's another wedding reception request or even some other kind of a reception request that doesn't involve Beach to Beacon, the governors, or the Coast Guard, then it's hard to say no with everything you do. And until we have a plan in place, we felt that um, we should restrict the wedding. We're not saying the wedding can't happen. I mean, or the reception can't happen. And I, to my knowledge, there haven't been receptions there before. There have only been ceremonies. Um, so we're not saying it couldn't happen, we're just saying at this point we think it should be up near the shelter. And there's, there's the parking, as I mentioned, there are utilities, um, Tucker's planning a lobster bake, there's a fire pit up there, um, whereas to have a lobster bake down on the green, depending upon which way the wind is blowing, you know, those generate smoke, which can create, you know, a potential problem for visitors to the fort. So we kind of looked at it both ways and said, you know, the, the advantages of the shelter are the utilities being available, the fire pit parking uh, can be on that level. The precedent is there for allowing tents. Um, it's still not a bad view. I mean, I was up there today and, I mean, granted, all the leaves aren't on the trees, but I mean, you can still see the ocean in the distance from the shelter area. The further back you get, um, that's not so possible. But And the noise that would be generated from the music and the patrons um, would be muted somewhat by having it up in that location as opposed to having it down on the green where it would be adjacent to the lighthouse and the southern path walk, uh, goes along that area. So um, those were essentially the reasons we came up with as to why 
we felt that's where the, the appropriate location was and um, 